Hello friends, this video on data handling part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So based on whatever we have discussed so far on the bar graphs and the histograms, the frequency distribution table, let us try to answer a few questions. Question number one, for which of these would you use a histogram to show the data? Now, before we look at the scenarios, let me remind you that a histogram is only used for grouped frequency distribution. So any type of data which can be divided into groups, only they can be represented using histograms. First scenario, the number of letters for different areas in a postman's bag. Okay, so in a postman's bag, you might have letters that belong to different areas. So do you think that a histogram can be used here? So in this case, your data would be something like this. Let us talk about the first scenario. So if you try to visualize the uh, frequency distribution table that you might have in this case, so that would be something like this. Let's say the areas and number of letters. So maybe for area A, there might be 10 letters. For area B, there might be 5 letters. For area C, there might be 23 letters and so on. So somewhat the, the frequency distribution would be somewhat of this kind. So do you feel that this can be divided into groups? No. So, so there is no grouping in this. You do have frequency, but there is no grouping. So therefore, this cannot be represented by histogram. B. Height of competitors in an athlete's meet. Height of competitors. Now, when you talk about height of athletes, now in an athlete's meet, there will be many athletes, right? Now, some of them might have, uh, they all would have different heights. Right. Some, some of them might be uh, 5 feet, some of them might be 6 feet, some might be 7 feet, some might be 6.1. So they all will have different heights. But in this case, what you can do is you can actually create groups. So you can actually create groups in the sense that how many athletes fall in the height range of say less than 4 feet. How many of them fall in the range of 4 to 5? How many of them fall in the range of 5 to 6 and so on? And on the other hand, you can write down the number of athletes who are in this height range. Right? So in this way, you can actually have, the, have a grouped frequency distribution table and therefore you can use histogram to show the data. C. The number of cassettes produced by five companies. Now, in this case, again, you, you have the name of the companies and the number of cassettes that are being produced by them. So let's say you have a company X, company Y, company Z and so on and the number of cassettes that they have produced. So in this case, do you think that you can create groups? No. So no groups, no group frequency, therefore no histograms. The last one, number of passengers boarding trains from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at a station. Now this can again be divided into groups because you have a bigger time interval that is from 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock in the evening. So here the time can be divided into groups. Maybe passengers from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and so on till 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Now for each of these groups, you will have a frequency, like maybe 5 passengers at the, the, during this time range, maybe 10 passengers between 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and so on. So here again, you can have a grouped frequency distribution. Therefore, yes, we can use histogram to show this data. So whenever you are given any scenario which talks about data, the first thing that you need to analyze is whether that data can be divided into class intervals, whether that data can be represented in the form of groups. If you can, that means you can have a grouped frequency distribution and for a grouped frequency distribution, you can have a histogram. 
Question number two. The weekly wages of 30 watt workers in a factory are given below. Using tally marks, make the frequency table with intervals as 800 to 810, 810 to 820 and so on. Now, the first thing that we need to decide whenever we want to make a grouped frequency distribution table, the first thing that we have to decide is the class intervals. Now, two class intervals are being given. So basically, the, the first column would be groups. The second column would be tally marks. And the third column would be frequency. So for the first column, the question itself says that the groups or the class intervals sh should be something of the sort. Now looking at these two class intervals, what do we see? We see that the upper limit of the first class interval is the lower limit of the second class interval, which shows that this is an exclusive class interval. So that means throughout it should be exclusive class interval. Also, what is the class size? Class size is 810 minus 800, that is class size is 10. So throughout we will have to maintain a class size of 10. Now for the second class interval 820 is the upper limit. So for the third interval 820 will be the lower limit and what would be the upper limit? The upper limit should be something such that the size is 10. That means 820 plus 10 which is 830. What would be the fourth interval? It would be 830 plus 10 which is 840 and so on. Now till where do we need to continue? Till that class interval which would accommodate the maximum value which is given here in this table. So we have 30 values here. So which is the maximum value that we have here? Let, let us try to find out the maximum value. 898. So do you have something greater than 898? No. So 898 is the maximum value. So let's see till where do we need to make class intervals so that we can accommodate 898. So when we take the last interval as 890 to 900, so 898 falls into this interval and that's how we are able to accommodate all the data that is given, all the data of the 30 workers. Now for each of these class intervals, let us try to find out the frequency. So let's try to find out the values which are between 800 and 810. Now this is an exclusive class interval. So 810 would not be included in the first class interval. It would be included in the second class interval, right? Because in every class interval, the lower limit is included, but the upper limit is excluded. That is why it is called exclusive class interval. So for the first class interval, how many entries do we have? one two and three so there are three entries for the first interval similarly let us try to find out the frequencies for different class intervals And this is how we obtain the tally marks just by counting the number of uh, so by counting the number of wages that fall in the respective class intervals and from this we actually get the frequency and this completes the grouped frequency distribution table so the mo most important thing to decide here is the class interval and to, de to decide how the class intervals would be. First of all, you will have to determine whether it is an inclusive or exclusive class interval. Then you will have to determine the class size. If you know these two things, you will be very correctly able to determine all the class intervals. Question number three. The number of hours for which students of a particular class watched television during holidays is shown through the given graph. Answer the following. 
Okay, so here in the graph, what do you see? On the y-axis, you have the number of students and on the x-axis, you see the number of hours they watch television. Now, looking at this graph, we will have to answer some of the questions. So, let us look at the first question. For how many hours did the maximum number of students watch TV? So, where do we have the number of hours? on the x-axis. So just observe that duration, maybe one to two hours, two to three hours, three to four hours, in which duration maximum number of students have observed. So you see in the first duration, four students, second duration, th eight, 22, 32, eight, six. So where do you have maximum number of students here? So which is this duration? This is nothing but four to five hours. So the answer for this would be four to five hours. This is the duration during which maximum number of students watch TV. How many students watched TV for less than four hours? Now you see here, where do you have four hours? This is four hours. So how many students watched less than four hours? All those students who lie below four. So how many students lie below four? Here you have four students, here you have eight students, here you have 22 students because four students watch between one to two hours, which is less than four hours. Eight students watch between two to three hours, which is again less than four hours. Again, 22 students watch between three to four hours, which is again less than four hours. So all in all, we can say that four plus eight plus 22 students, which is 34 students watch TV for less than four hours. Question number three, how many students spent more than five hours in watching TV? More than five. So here we have five. More than five would be these, this bar and this bar because this is within four to five. So this would be less than five. So here more than five would include this eight and this six. So this would be eight plus six, which is equal to 14 students. So 14 students watch more than five hours TV. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.